Aldrich family, based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother! <laughs> And now for the Aldrich family. All the happenings in a typical day of a teenage boy can never be diagrammed. There aren't enough zigzag lines for that. You simply start a day with a boy like Henry Aldrich, cross your fingers, and hope for the best. The scene opens in the school cafeteria. It is noon time. Why don't you like Charlie Clark, Henry? Oh, I like him, Nancy. I like him, but gee whiz, I thought we were going to have lunch alone. Well, I didn't invite him. He just happened to ask who I was eating with, and I said, just Henry. And my goodness, I couldn't be rude and tell him he wasn't welcome. I know, but... Gee whiz, he ruins my appetite. Henry, you've already had three sandwiches. Sure, but I'm forcing myself. Here you are, Nancy. Here's your milk. Oh, thank you, Charlie. Say, Hank, would you mind moving your chair a little? What for? Well, so I can slip mine in next to Nancy's. Now listen, Charlie Clark. I just wanted her to take a bite of this sandwich. It's made from a can of patty de foie gras my Uncle Horace sent us. Patty what? Foie gras, foie gras, gee whiz. French chopped liver, Henry. Oh, foie gras. Boy, Charlie, do you speak a broken French? Is that your Uncle Horace Clark who's in Congress? Sure, and the mayor of a French village gave him six cans of the stuff as a token of how his whole country felt toward my uncle. Gee, Nancy, did you ever hear a story like that in your life? Story? Listen, Henry, have you ever heard of Lewis and Clark? Who? Lewis and Clark, who practically discovered the rest of America. Listen, Charlie, are you trying to make us believe that that Clark was your relative, too? Figure it out for yourself, Henry. Figure it out for yourself. Hey, Henry! Oh, gee whiz, it's Willie. Henry, you have to get me out of a spot. Willie, can't you see I'm having lunch with Nancy? But all you have to do is tell Mr. Bradley I'm the wrong one to speak in assembly. Willie, you're speaking in assembly? Nancy, I'm just as shocked as you are. How did it happen? I volunteered. What? How did I know they only paid outside speakers? You expected to get paid? Sure, and if you ask me, they've got no right to discriminate just because I'm a minor. So, Henry, wouldn't you be willing to point out to Mr. Bradley that every time I open my mouth, I make a fool of myself? What makes you think he doesn't know already? <laughs> Willie, I can't possibly talk to Mr. Bradley now. But, Henry, if you really have to help Willie out, I don't mind finishing up with Charlie. What? Sure, run along. Oh, no, how rude do you think I am? But, Henry, I can't memorize. I'm sorry, Willie. So isn't Cynthia Harris related to Mr. Bradley? I think so. Hey, Cynthia! Willie, I thought you hated the way she popped her gum. I do, but right now I'm desperate. Hi, Cynthia, old kid! My goodness, poor Willie. Speaking of memorizing, did I ever tell you about my uncle who had a photographic memory? Listen, Charlie, who are you kidding? Kidding? Henry, did you ever hear of Socrates? I suppose he was a Clark, too. No, but my uncle memorized his complete works at one sitting. <laughs> Gee, Nancy, did you hear that? Henry, if Charlie said he did, the least we can do is believe him. Oh, that's okay, Nancy. He's just jealous. Jealous? Listen, Charlie, it might interest you to know that there were just as many famous Aldridges in history as there were Clark. Oh, yeah? It's not famous, sir. Name one. One? Oh, that's okay. That's okay. They're there. You want a bet? Bet? A phrase? How much, Charlie? How much? Fifty dollars. Fifty? Why not make it a million? Okay. Okay, what? A million. It's a deal. Shay. 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 You're a witness, Nancy, and I'll match my Uncle Horace against any Aldrich you can dig up. Your Uncle Horace. Your Uncle Horace. My Uncle Horace. Did you know he delivered one of the longest filibusters on record? My goodness, he did. Well, all I can say is it certainly runs in the family. <laughs> Alice, where's Henry? Why, he went out right after dinner, Sam. Yes? He said there was something in the library he wanted to look up before they closed. He went to the library? Yes, dear. Henry? Yes. 
My son. Yes, Sam. <laughs> and incidentally, did I tell you I got a letter from your cousin Alan's boy, Lionel? Really? How is he? Fine, and doing very well in his job. And he asked for some pictures of us. Father! My goodness, Henry's back from the library fast. He's probably getting used to it in small doses. <laughs> and here, Henry. Boy, Father, boy, you'd think they'd certainly have a book that's more complete. Who, dear? The library, Mother. Of famous people, the book they had didn't mention a single Aldridge. Dear, we Aldridges live very quietly. Excuse me, Sam. I'm going to drop a line to Lionel. Henry, what's this about famous Aldriches? Well, gee whiz. Charlie Clark's been bragging about his darn family, and... Father, I have to find a famous Aldridge or I'll lose my bet. Henry, what have I told you about Betty? Gee whiz, I couldn't admit in front of Nancy that our entire family was nondescript, could I? Henry, our family's hardly that. Did did you tell Charlie about your Uncle John? He did something? Your Uncle John won the milking championship of the entire state. He did? Hands down. But... <laughs> Gee, Father, Charlie's Uncle Horace is in Congress... Weren't there any Aldridges who were more, more outstanding? Why, of course, there were many. There were, oh boy, who, Father? Well, well there was, uh, there was, um... Yeah? Henry, it isn't important who your ancestors were, it's who you are. That's just it. Who are we? <laughs> what? Well, gee whiz, there isn't one of us worth talking about. Let me tell you something, Henry, I don't know Nancy. For all I know, she may be a very nice girl. But if she's only interested in you because of your ancestors, then I'd look at her again. I have, Father. Beg your pardon? And she's one of the prettiest girls in the whole school. And, Father, would you mind moving your feet so I could get at the encyclopedia? Hey, Henry! Boy, this is a fine time for Willie to show up. Henry, if he's back selling secondhand Christmas cards, I'm not interested. <laughs> you know what, Henry? You know what? Cynthia Harris hasn't got a bit of influence with Mr. Bradley. Willie, what's that on your tie? Bubble gun, Mr. Aldridge. I just stood too close to Cynthia when she popped. <laughs> well, now I'm stuck with the charge of the light brigade. The charge of the light brigade? That's what I have to recite in assembly. Here, Henry, hold the book while I see how much of the first stands I've memorized. Willie, I can't. I'm going through Abba Azo. What? Abba to Azo, Abba to Azo, in the encyclopedia. Willie, don't you think you'd be happier if you memorized at home? I was doing that, but my father decided the acoustics were better over here. <laughs> you don't say it. Mr. Aldridge, would you hold the book? Oh, Willie, I... I'd be willing to pay you for it, Mr. Aldridge. I don't need money that badly. <laughs> oh, just take a second here. <clears throat> the Charge of the Light Brigade by Alfred Ward Tennyson. Carefully, carefully, carefully onward. How's that so far, Mr. Aldridge? <laughs> it's perfect. It is? What comes next? Oh, the Valley of... The... Oh, boy, Father, I found one. Cyrus Aldridge, 1810 to 1875, a well-known general in the Civil War. In the Civil War? Well. Oh, boy, excuse me. Where are you going, Henry? To phone somebody. Oh, in the valley of what did you say, Mr. Aldridge? Yes. Number, please. Elm, 424. Elm, 424. Hey, Willie, could you bring that encyclopedia in here, please? But I'm tied up with your father. I can spare you. Hello? Hello, Nancy. This is Henry. Hi. Henry, Henry Aldridge. Oh, Henry, hold on a second while I see what I can do about all the noise here. Henry, here's your encyclopedia. Thanks, Willie. What else does it say about Cyrus Aldridge? Cyrus Aldridge, 1810 to 1875. A well-known general in the Civil War who gained notoriety at the Battle of Crooker's Creek when he fell off his horse and missed the ferry. What? <laughs> From then on, he was laughingly referred to as the general who missed the boat. Oh, Henry, you really want to tell Nancy about that? Hello. Why? Hello, Nancy. I'd better go back. I left your father right in the middle of the valley of death. I couldn't hear you. Charlie was playing the piano so loud. Charlie was playing? Yes, a lovely song his aunt wrote. What did you want to tell me, Henry? Why... Well, gee whiz, Nancy, when you come right down to it, it's not a person's... It, well, it, it's not who a person's ancestors were. It, it's who he is. What? Well, that is... I mean, well, if you can't take a person for a person, we certainly ought to look at each other again. Well, my goodness, Henry Aldrich, I didn't make any bets about who the Aldriches were. You did. Sure. And I'm certainly sorry you consider me that shallow. But... Goodbye. But, Nancy... 
Gee whiz. Henry, dear, may I have that snapshot of you on your dresser? My snapshot? Well, Mother, that's the one with my dog, Smoothie. Dear, Smoothie ran away three years ago. Sure, but suppose he comes back. <laughs> well, how he feel he finds out I gave away my only picture of him. Suppose I ask Lionel to send it back. Send it back? Is this Lionel reliable? Henry, he's your own father's cousin's boy. Mother, I've somehow lost confidence in our whole family. <laughs> well, I think you can trust a man who works for the Royal Canadian Mounted. The Royal Canadian Mounted? Yes, dear. Those guys in the red coats who always bring back their man even if they die first? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's one in our family? Yes. Oh, boy. Wait till I get my hands on Charlie Clark. What for? What for, Mother? What for? Gee whiz, he owes me a million dollars. <laughs> just got a telegram that his vacation's this week and he's stopping by for a visit. Oh, boy, when's he coming? Today. Henry's meeting a train right after school. Oh, boy. Imagine having that guy in Centerville who practically captured nearly six criminals dead or alive all by himself. He did? I heard it from at least three different kids in school. My goodness. Oh, boy, I can't wait to see his horse. He's bringing it with him. They never go anywhere without their horses. Really? They practically sleep together. Really? I wonder how my big sister Eloise will feel about that. She's even baking her cake with red and blue icing. What for? To go with Lionel's uniform when he comes to dinner at our house tomorrow night. He's coming to dinner. My sister Eloise has been dying to meet him. She hasn't had a date with a man in uniform since the war. Invite me, Nancy. Invite me. Oh, I'd love to, Agnes, but... Frankly, if I invited all the kids who wanted to meet Lionel, I'd have to hire a banquet hall. Hey, Agnes. I have to go into class, Agnes. Nancy, are you sure you couldn't squeeze me in, providing I bring my own food? I'm sorry. Agnes, would you hold this book for me? What for? Well, don't you realize the assembly's a day after tomorrow, and I haven't memorized a single line except half a league, half a league? Well, you know what they say, kid. Half a league's better than none. <laughs> Agnes, this is no time for jokes. Look, Willie, you're a friend of Henry's. Can you fix it for me to meet his cousin? Agnes, I've got problems of my own. Oh, boy, is that Toby Smith down there? Maybe he'll speak to Henry. Hey, Toby, wait for me! Agnes, Oh, boy. Yes, Mr. Bradley. Were you calling someone? Why, yes, sir, Toby Smith. I see, and where is he? At home? You mean I was raising my voice? Raising it is hardly an adequate description. Please remember, this is the school. Yes, sir. I'll try not to lose my head in the future. Now, please do. Uh, now, run along. Yes, sir. It's been nice talking with you, Mr. Bradley. The pleasure is all mine. Mr. Bradley, could I have a word with you? Uh, certainly, Willie. What about? Well, I'm reciting an assembly Friday, see? You are? Yes, sir. Reciting? Yes, sir. Well, that's fine, Willie. I... Sure, it'll be an assembly we'll remember for a long time. Well, that's just it, Mr. Bradley. I'd like to be excused. Excused? Oh, isn't that that I don't want to, but... Gee whiz, I have a head that nothing seems to stick into. Yeah. So, couldn't we get someone else to take my place? Uh, who? Why, why... No other student is prepared, and we don't have the money for outside speakers. Oh, boy! I beg your pardon? Oh, boy, why didn't I think of him before? Mr. Bradley, I've got just the person to take my place. <laughs> Henry, dear, please stand back from the track. Yes, Mother. Father, are you sure this is Lionel's train? I believe it is. Be on the lookout for a man in a red jacket. Sam, there's a red jacket. Where? Where? Down at the end of the platform. Alice, that's a porter. Oh. Uh, who's calling? My little fat man, the Derby. Is he waving at us? He can't be. I never saw him before in my life. You're Mr. and Mrs. Aldrich, aren't you? Why, yes. I recognize you from your pictures. Hello. Cousin Sam? Cousin Alice? Uh, I'm Lionel. You? You? You are? Yes. I guess this is Henry. I didn't recognize you without your dog. Well, <laughs> it's very nice to have you with us. 
with us, Lionel. Yes, yes. Uh, when, uh, uh, when did you leave the mountains? Oh, I haven't left them. No. Whatever gave you the idea I had. But where's your uniform? Henry. Oh, I'm sorry, Henry, but I don't have one. They only come up to size 38 and, well, <laughs> I'm a 44. <laughs> oh, boy. Besides, nobody in our office wears one. Office? You work in an office? Well, uh, well, uh, shall we be getting home, Sam? I imagine Lionel would like to wash up. Yes, thanks, I would, Cousin Alice. Uh, the car's parked over this way, Lionel. Henry, aren't you coming? Mother, I have to phone Nancy Adams first. What for? And call off that dinner date. Henry Aldrich. Mother, if Lionel's seen in public, I'll be the laughing stock of a whole school. Hey, Henry! Henry, I must say you're not behaving at all well. Henry, have I got wonderful news for you. Willie, out of my way. I have to make a phone call. But guess who I talked Mr. Bradley into letting him take my place in the assembly tomorrow? Willie, I don't have time to... But it's to... Lionel. I don't care... Who? Lionel. Mr. Bradley said it was the best idea I've... Henry? Henry, why are you staring at me like that? Henry? Mrs. Alwood's come back. I think Henry's had an attack. <laughs> to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Henry's second cousin, Lionel, of the Royal Canadian Mounted, has turned out to be a severe disappointment. And to make matters worse, Willie has volunteered Lionel's service as a speaker at Central High School. It is the day of assembly. The scene opens outside the school's main office. Willie, you'll just have to go into Mr. Bradley's office here and volunteer to recite your poem again. But, Henry... I told you, if Lionel steps on that stage, well, I'll be the laughing stock of the entire school. Henry, things aren't that bad. But you should see him, Willie. He's short, he's fat, and he doesn't have a uniform. And he can't stay on a horse any better than General Cyrus Aldridge could. And to stop everything, do you know what he had for breakfast this morning? What? Cream puffs. No, kid. Three of them. Well, Henry, things aren't completely hopeless. Maybe the assembly will be canceled. Canceled? Sure. Remember the one that got called off last month? What about it? Wasn't it because the bell somehow didn't ring? Well? Well? Willie, are you suggesting... Well, naturally not, but... You happen to be in the janitor's room, and somehow your elbow happened to hit the switch that worked the bells, and they didn't happen to ring for assembly. Well, Willie, for the last time, will you recite the charge of the light brigade? You want a definite answer? Yes. No. <laughs> Once I get past the valley of death, where am I? Okay. Okay. If that's your attitude, I'll, I'll volunteer myself in place of Lionel. You? To do what? Play my cello. Henry, you can. Why not? You're terrible. Willie, I played it once before in assembly and nothing happened. Step aside. Come in. Well, good luck, Ken, old timer. Oh, it's you, Henry. Come in. Yes, sir. Henry, I've never seen the student body so excited about any assembly before. Well, about that. And is I... your cousin be in his uniform? No, sir. He's a 44. A what? <laughs> he doesn't have one. Oh, it really doesn't matter. Uh, how would you like me to introduce him? Well, Mr. Bradley, about that, he, he's going to be nervous, see, and he was he is a member of my own family, you might say, and... and yes? Well, how would you feel if I... If, if I... Yes? Mr. Bradley, wouldn't you care to sit down before I suggest this? Henry, it isn't necessary to explain. It isn't? No, if you think your cousin Lionel would feel more comfortable if you were to introduce him. Introduce him? Uh, naturally, I wouldn't mind. What? Just be up on the stage before assembly begins, and we'll make the necessary arrangements. But, but, but you, you see... You I... know, Henry, for a moment I was afraid you were going to suggest that I allow you to play your cello again. <laughs> Yep, 
was our own orchestra playing William Tell, a number which Miss Wheeler tells me they've been working on for some time. I'm sure we all found their performance quite uh, spirited, uh, especially in the brass section. <laughs> now, <clears throat> in connection with the assembly bell ringing 15 minutes early today, I regret to say it was no accident. I just learned that two boys were seen running from the janitor's room immediately after it happened. And when we discover who they are, I can assure you they will be severely punished. Uh, I uh, see our principal speaker hasn't arrived yet, so uh, I'm sure we'll all enjoy hearing once again from the orchestra. Miss Wheeler. <laughs> My would. sister, Eloise, she just couldn't wait to see what Lionel looked like. Oh, boy. And do you know what she brought in honor of his coming to dinner tomorrow? A pair of shoes with six-inch heels. Nancy, do you think she ought to get her hopes up that high? <laughs> oh, boy. Who's that? I'm sorry I'm late. I was all over town looking for some things I need for my talk. Uh, Henry, have you heard from him yet? Why, yes, Mr. Bradley. I've heard from him. Mr. Bradley, this is my cousin Lionel. What? What? Of, of the Royal Canadian Mounted. Oh, my goodness. How do you do, sir? Why, uh, welcome to Central High. Uh, Henry, suppose you go out and introduce... Henry! But when do you suppose he disappeared to... Yes, Father, it's I, all right. Well, how did the assembly go? How did it go? It went, Father. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I didn't even stay. Oh? And, Father, Father, can I ask a big favor of you? Favor? And when I do, I want you to keep in mind that I intend to go to work and pay part of my tuition. What tuition? To Abbott City High. Abbott City? What's wrong with Central High? Well, it's the kids. Father, I don't know. Well, then, gee whiz, it isn't who you are. It's who your ancestors were. So you want to change? Yes, sir. I think it'd be better all the way around. Henry. Henry, don't you think you ought to be a little ashamed of yourself? I, Father? Here you are feeling sorry for yourself because Lionel isn't something you pretended that he was. But tell me the truth, Henry. Have you ever met a nicer person than Lionel? Why, no. Of course you haven't. He's as pleasant, well-mannered, and charming a person as you'd ever want to meet. You should have every reason to be proud of it instead of feeling that you were betrayed. Oh, gee, Father. Gee, I didn't look at it that way. I didn't think you did. Oh, please answer the phone, Henry. Yes, Father. And you know what about Abbott City High? What? I'm sorry I mentioned it. Hello? This is Nancy. Oh. Before you start, Nancy, let me tell you one thing. If you're expecting an apology, you're wasting your time. An apology for what? You're right. Boy, I've never met a more pleasant, a more... Gee whiz, who cares if he can't stay on a horse anyway? Henry, I agree with you. Yeah, what? I think Lionel is just fine, and so is my sister Eloise. Well, gee whiz. She's even going down to buy a pair of flat heel shoes. That's how divine she thinks he is. <laughs> and you should have heard the hand the kids gave Lionel. They gave him a hand? Yes, and Mr. Bradley said it was the most interesting assembly talk he ever heard. Nancy, what did Lionel talk about? His work with the Royal Canadian Mountains in the Scientific Crime Detection Bureau. What? Yes. He showed us how he always gets his man without even leaving his desk. Well, I'll be darned. And Charlie Clark certainly lost that bet. Hey, Henry! Excuse me, Nancy. Willie just walked in. All right. Don't forget dinner tomorrow night. Gee, I won't. We're having saddle of lamb in Lionel's honor. Goodbye, Henry. Goodbye, 
Hi, Nancy. Willie, I'm in here. Boy, Henry's boy. Darn that Lionel, anyhow. Willie, you haven't heard. Lionel was a big success in assembly. I know he was. I know he was. I was there. You were? Sure, and he was such a big success. You know what he offered to do? What? Come back tomorrow and give a practical demonstration. He's going to track down a criminal by scientific method. No kidding. Boy, I'd sure like to see that. That's what you think. You know who he's tracking now? No, who? The two guys who rang the assembly bell. What? Boy, Henry, you certainly have one fine family. Listen again next week, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with your favorite youngster, his family, and his pals. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith.